Hello gin lovers and welcome back to No Nonsense Gin Reviews with me Bobby Freeman where today we're going to be reviewing no gins at all. For this is my Fever Tree Tonic Special as you can see from this handsome array of little bottles I have lined up here for you today. Now the reason I picked Fever Tree is, as many of my regular viewers will know, it is my absolute favourite tonic and I use it in every single review that I do just to keep a fairly constant and uh, fair test but um, and I think I think it is widely considered by a majority of people not everyone it is you know this is subjective some people might prefer other ones and I, I don't mind other ones but I think fever tree is generally considered by a lot of people the best and this is reflected uh, I understand I see in the news this week that um, uh, it's reflected in its share price on the stock market because it has rocketed recently which which reflects you know the popularity uh, the well-deserved popularity I think of the drink so, um, and it's a fairly young company as well. It's only been around since 2003. Started off by two guys called Charles and Tim. Now they like to drink gin and they like to drink vodka, but they felt that the mixes they were using were okay, but they felt that, you know, something was missing. They think there could have been something better. They think there was something better out there. It was possible to make something better. So they decided to make it themselves. And they embarked on a journey all around the world and they researched um, you know, history of tonic and how it's made and, and you know, so how to make it better. And they came up with with this now um the main uh, most a lot of people know the main ingredient of uh tonic water is um uh, quinine or quinine or quinine i, I don't think you can pronounce it both ways but uh, i'll fluctuate between the two now um, now listen to this okay so quinine is the key ingredient that creates the gentle bitterness in the tonic water and that is also the reason that some people don't like it they find it a little bit bitter but we may have a solution to that uh, later on just keep watching um here we go. So uh, our, na our name was chosen as it is the colloquial name for the Kinchona tree. It might be Chinchona. I think it's, I don't know, we'll say Kinchona for the purpose of, th of this video. The bark of which produces the quinine, okay? Now, after discovering early 17th century references in the British Library, Charles and Tim located the only remaining plantation of the original Kinchona, Kinchona ledgeriana trees, known locally as fever trees. So let's have a look at them, shall we? So we'd start off with the main one, the one I use for all my videos and all my reviews. This is the, uh, the, the well, I wouldn't say standard, but this is their sort of core um, tonic water, the one they started with. It's just called their premium Indian tonic water. And premium it is indeed, my friend, because it is bloody gorgeous. Like I say, it's sourced from the Democratic Republic of Congo, and it uh, that's where it gets its uh, particular unique and beautiful quinine taste from. But they also use uh, oils from Mexican bitter oranges. Now, I wouldn't have got that straight away when I drink it, but um, I guess it's all about subtlety of flavour, isn't it? So that's, I'm just going to go from the bottle. I don't think any, no, there's no point wasting time with glass, I don't think so. Mm, mm, mm. It's just brilliant. It's a very familiar taste for me. I'm not going to go overboard because I try it every day. And I, I dare say that you people have too. It's just a wonderful, wonderful quality drink. Now, however, as I say, a lot of people I speak to, well, not a lot of people, but some people I speak to, they say they don't enjoy tonic because it is bitter, okay? And there is a certain bitterness. I think it's an acquired taste. I remember when I first tried it, I was, I was a little bit like, mm, I'm not really sure about that, but I've certainly settled into it now. However, if you're not particularly keen on that uh, bitterness, then this little fellow here, the Mediterranean one, might be the answer for you because they go lighter on the quinine in this one. They tone it down a little bit and they add in rosemary, lemon and thyme, which are kind of uh, freshens it up a little bit and sort of offsets that quinine sort of taste. Let's have a little quick go. Again, I have tried this a lot, so I'm really just doing it for... Um, taste purposes on the video. Yeah, straight away. I've always said, I don't really tell the difference between these two, but then tasting them back to back, you can definitely get, a, 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 there's less of that quinine, less of that bitter taste, and then more of a sort of a, a mixture of freshness and zestiness from the lemon as well. But again, very, very subtle here. But I think if you don't like that uh, bitterness, that's probably the one to go for. Now then, now we move into a sort of a, a different realm over here. So they're moving almost away from what tonic is, really. It still is tonic, of course. But let's start off with this little fellow over here, the elderflower one. Again, if, 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 if you're not a fan of the quinine, and this still is a bit too quinine for you, then maybe you need to venture into the elderflower territory. Now, as far as I'm concerned, adding elderflower to anything improves it because it, it is a beautiful flavor it's very very nice i always always enjoy it let's have a quick swig on this first right mm -hmm. 
Oh, 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 oh. I could quite happily just drink a bottle of that just on its own. It's just a lovely, lovely flavour. There's not a great deal to say about it, to be honest, other than the flat that they don't add anything else in apart from elderflower oil. So it is literally tonic with some elderflower in there. Now, I haven't come across anyone who doesn't like elderflower, so I would recommend, if, as I say, if this quinine is still too much for you, have a little go on that fella, see what you think. However, if that still isn't doing it for you, then we have a wild card for you over here because this little fellow is the aromatic fever tree. Now that, oh, look at the way the uh, dew is condensing seductively on the side. It's a very hot day in London. Oh, ho, 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 that's gorgeous. Oh my God, top marks for the cooling quality of the bottle. That's lovely. Um, might pop it down the old pants now, but that's a different sort of video. Um, now, so this one is very, very interesting because it's almost quite difficult to uh, describe the flavours in this. I've had to write them down because there's so many and they're weird and wonderful. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard of these flavours being used together again. They, they must have had a sort of a, they must have had a bit of a funny five minutes when they invented this one because listen, listen to these flavours, right? I've got them written down here. Ginger, cardamom, Madagascan vanilla, okay? Uh, and they also use Angus, Angostura bark, okay? So it's... I couldn't tell you what Angostura bark tastes like really on its own. I don't think many people would do, but um, it is a lovely, lovely, it, it's a bizarre little mix of flavors, but it, it, I tell you what, it works. It's very, very nice. It's moving away from what tonic is generally, although it, it, it still is tonic, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. -hmm, mm, -hmm. mm. It's very, it's it's really weird. You can tell by the way I'm struggling for words. It's kind of an odd one, this one, but all I can say is, again, if these two aren't doing it for you, this is a very interesting uh, way. And or even, even if you do like the others, it's a very, sometimes once in a while, it's nice to try something new and a little bit weird. And this one does it. My girlfriend loves this stuff. Absolutely lovely. It's kind of, it's definitely got a sort of a, a subtle sweetness to it. I guess that's the vanilla. And I like the way that the, the vanilla is in sort of like juxtaposition with the cardamom and the ginger, which are quite big sort of zesty sharp flavors, but the vanilla kind of softens it up. But as I say, it's quite difficult to describe, but I would definitely recommend you give this one a go. Now then, you may notice here that this one has a silver top and a silver bit around here, and it says refreshingly light on there. Now, that means that it is sugar free, okay? Now, usually, I don't like to get the sugar free ones, but I couldn't find uh, the normal one for this one. Now, the reason, I my advice would be, if you want to enjoy, properly enjoy a gin and tonic, don't get the sugar free. Get the full sugar one because it's not going to be the same. You're going to be missing something. It'll be replaced with artificial sweeteners, which trick your body into thinking you've got sugar, but it hasn't. You're left feeling a bit hollow, I think. Now, I am aware that there is a war on sugar at the moment, and sugar is the worst thing ever, and you, everyone should be cutting it out of their diet, and it's the, you know, it's the reason for all evil in this world. I kind of think we all need to calm down, take a step back, take a deep breath, and just, just compartmentalize this and think about it, and just realize that sugar isn't the worst thing ever. As long as you're not drinking like 17 bottles of it a day, or, you know, basically just don't go overboard. All things in moderation. If you, sometimes you need to invest in yourself and have something nice, even if it's not the best thing for you. I like to go out and have a, and have a steak every now and then, you know, great big steak on the plate like that. Not very good for you, and I certainly wouldn't do it every day because I'd be dead. But occasionally, I like to do it, and it's not gonna do me any harm. So, my advice is, go for the full, unless you know, got health reasons and you can't have sugar for some reason, then fine, avoid it. But I would say, majority of the time, if you want a proper gin and tonic taste, go for the full sugar. Now, in terms of price, it's, it, it is, I have to admit, it is the, at the pricier end of the tonic market, okay? This is, it's about £1.80 a bottle, this, which is about $2.20, okay? So, and I must admit, I have to admit, you can get stuff, you can get tonic a lot, lot cheaper. You can get double the size bottle for less than half the price. But, oh, I don't want to sound like a advert for Fever Tree, but when two thirds, or like, well, more than that really, 80% of your gin and tonic is tonic, why would you compromise on the tonic? If you like the other tonics, then absolutely fine. I know I've got subscribers that say they like Schweppes, and I must say, if there wasn't any Fever Tree available, I would go for Schweppes. It's not bad at all. but. Generally speaking, I enjoy it way more with the fever tree. Uh, unless you're really strapped for cash, I would go for this every time. 
So guys, that was the Fever Tree Tonic Special. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or any thoughts, please put them in the uh, section below. I reply to everything all the time. And uh, as always, don't forget to smash my subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos. And I will see you all next time on No Nonsense Gin Reviews, where I will be Bobby Freeman. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.